Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll see how to integrate Auth2 in Spring Boot applications. Without further delay, let's get started. So first, we'll see one real-time example where this Auth2 is helpful. So for that one, I will open hp.com if you see this website so this is the hp website so nowadays most of the applications if you want to use those applications they will ask for registration either we need to register with them else we need to log in with third party authentication so nowadays google Facebook and Microsoft. These are the famous authentications. Okay. So if you observe this application, so here there is a sign in button. Okay. So if you click this button, so it will ask for login. So if you observe here, so see here we need to use username or email. So if you already have the account, you can able to log in with this. Okay, so if you don't have the account, we need to create the account first from here. If you click on the create account, so we need to provide this information and we need to click on the create. So this information will save in HP side. Okay, so this is normal user registration. So if you see the below, there is it again to login facilities they are provided one is for continue with google another one is continue with microsoft if you click on this continue with google so we can able to log in this application using our google authentications okay see so we need to select any of the email id it will automatically log in with this application okay so here they are using like google authentication services that is oauth2 okay so again, if you see, they are logged in, but again, they are asking to give, fill the details. So if you are filling this detail, we are able to log in with Google. Also, they are storing our information in HP also. Okay. Here, if you have observed, there are two possibilities are there. One is for Google, another one is for HD. Okay. So now I am able to log in. So our information again, HP is stored, but we are used Google authentication. Also, they are forcibly asking to register with HP. Okay. This is the two scenarios. If you signed out again, okay. If you want to log in again, you can go with continue with Google, then it will automatically log in with this uh, Google information. See, I'm able to log in now. So, like this, we can able to log in with Google authentication with any of this application. Okay. So today we'll see how to integrate our Spring Boot application with Google. Both to authentication okay so for that one first we'll create this spring boot application from start dot spring dot io so here i'm giving the package name like com dot java codex spring boot Auth2. otherwise i will know spring boot google Auth2. okay this is my artifact name so here com dot java codex is my package name so here i am giving dependencies like web as well as the lombok and security and one more we need to use oauth2 okay one two three we are providing four dependencies now we can generate this project so now we'll load this application into IntelliJ ID. So I have imported project into my IntelliJ ID. And if you see the dependencies here, I'm using Spring Boot Starter OAuth2 client and Spring Boot Starter Security and Spring Boot Starter Web and Lombok. These are the dependencies I'm using here. Okay. So before creating this auth2 related configurations in spring boot applications first we need to create one client id 
एंड क्लाइंट सीक्रेट इन गूगल क्लाउड ओके सो फॉर दैट वन वी नीड टू गो टू द ब्राउजर टाइप गूगल वॉथ टू एंड यू कैन गो विद दिस फर्स्ट लिंक एंड हियर यू कैन गो विथ गूगल ए पी आई कंसोल ओके सो इफ यू सी हियर ए पी आई एंड सर्विसेस सो इफ यू सी हियर इज माई अकाउंट सो आई हैव लॉग इन विथ माई जी मेल अकाउंट ओके सो हियर we need to come to credentials first so first we need to create the projects already i have created the project if you click on this project i have created two projects so first you need to create project from new projects so so if you see here it is showing 23 projects remaining in your quota so it will allow to create 25 projects okay freely okay so already i have created the uh, two projects right so i am not creating now so here you need to give the project name and click on the create it will create new project for you so right now i am in this project okay angular sign in demo project so in this project i will create one more credentials for this come to the credentials click on the credentials now if you see what client id you can click on this one so here we need to select the application so here i am selecting like web application and here i am giving name of this application so i am giving spring security okay this is the project name i am giving in scroll down here we need to specify the url authorized javascript url because i am going to run this application in my local right so i will provide my local host url so i will run this application local host 8989 so i will specify my local host url then after that we need to specify the redirectory authorized url okay so re directory authorized url format would be http colon local host with same port number what we are specified in the top 8989 slash login slash what to slash code slash google so this is the format you need to specify this authorized redirect urls okay spelling is not correct google okay so code slash google now we can click on the create so it will create the client id client secret if you want you can click on the download json it will download in your local system okay so once is client id secret is created so now i am ready with client id and client secret now we'll try to add our functionality in our spring boot application okay so for that one first we'll create configuration class so configuration class is nothing but security security config to save our time so i just added this code if you see here so we are using security filter chain inside we are using authorized request okay so here we are doing authenticated for all the request using oauth to login okay if this oauth to is successfully log in then from here authentication success handler from here we need to handle the redirect if that authentication is successful then if you want to redirect to the any other url then you can specify those urls from here handle the success login here okay so if you see this security configurations so in the security configuration we are using security filter chain so this filter chain will validate our oauth to authentication once the authentication is successful then it will execute the custom authentication success handler so in this handler class we need to specify redirecting url so right now i am not specified any redirecting url let's see first how it will work after that we can update this redirecting url also okay this is the configurations class we need to 
create for this one okay so now we need to specify some properties for that one okay so we need to specify the secret id for this so if you observe my server port i have defined there 8989 copy this client id so if you see this is my spring security if you click on this so this is my security spring security you can click on this edit now we are able to see this authentication here is a client id here is the client secret okay so you can copy from here as already downloaded in the uh, json format so i will just open this json and we'll see the format how this format is looks like so if you see this is the client id i have downloaded at the time of creating and we need to specify this client id for this so this is my client id and this is my client secret so i have updated these two okay now we are added this configuration as well as the security configuration class also we are updated now we need to create one controller class for this to test this application okay so here is my hello controller and i have created two apis one is for get mapping and another one is slash login so when you use slash login it will return this welcome to auth2 and when you use this slash and here if you see we are using auth2 user information from this auth2 user we are retrieving the username as well as the email okay if you see this auth2 user where we are using so in the security configuration so here we are using auth2 login here is our auth2 user service from here you are able to get the user information whenever user logged in using this google authentication okay so in the previous uh, real time example also we can see whenever we are logging with the hp application so initially we are able to log in with google authentication but still they are asking to registration register with hp right so in this case if you observe their first name and email id pre-populated but last name is not populated because i have not mentioned last name in my google authentications while resisting with google so that is the reason last name is not showing so this is the hp.com and if you try to sign in with hp so this time i will change my email id so this time if you see continue with the google so previously i have used this email id now i will change to my email id now what will happen if you observe it asking to registration with hp also see it is asking create your account so here is the first time here is my last time this information is pre-populated how it is pre-populated this information is coming from the google and it is showing on this field so now you can just uh, do this checks and you can click on the create my account will create with hp so this information again will save into the hp so now if you come back to our application so now we'll create our controller so here is my hello controller from this what to user will able to get this user information so there is some requirements once you are logging with google authentication again we need to show those user information with our application database also okay so in this case we can use the same flow okay now we'll try to start this application so application is started in 8989 now we'll test this one http localhost my home url is 8989 so see now automatically redirecting into that google authentication so here it is showing my application name and if you select any of this email id then it will ask continue once you click on this continue then now i am able to see my information like name and email it is coming from the google authentication because in the api level i have mentioned this code from the oauth to user i want to retrieve username as well as the email okay so if you want to see 
what are the information coming from this uh, what the user just you can enable one debug point here and you can able to see this what this principle will have so just you can click in enable the debug from here and we'll uh, restart this application in the debug mode and we'll see what are the information will coming with what to users okay so so again i'm going with http localhost 8989 you can click on this enter now i can select this user information which is the email id you want to log in you can just select see now debug is coming to here in the principal if you click on this principal so if you see what are the information is coming from this see there are so much information is coming so whatever the information you want from here you can just take this information and you can store in your own database okay so here is the email id is there and here is the times uh, here is the name here is the email id here is the some expiry exp and also there are some other information also coming from here if you see here picture is also available if you are uploading any picture at the time of creating the google account that picture information also you will get hit see so much information is there this information you can able to store in your application database also once this validation is completed i hope this video is helpful for you please like share and subscribe my channel for more content